welcome to code effectively today we are going to do the second array program that is the program has the following tasks first you have to take first array of size m then take another array of size n and then club them both into a single array so what is the approach that you have to follow just listen that very carefully or what the program is trying to ask you i am giving you an example like for example if your array let's say int a is having numbers like 55 66 77 and 88 okay this is your first array now now you have to take another array let's say b okay and of different size because i have already said of size m and n so the size have to be different so let's say the another array is 1 2 3 of different now this array is of size 3 and the array a is of size 4 they both are different so now what you have to do in the third step club into a single array now you have to make sure you have to make another array c and you have to club a and b in a single array such that it will have 66 77 88 and 1 2 and 3 all the elements of a and then of b this is the whole process that you have to do or this is the whole thing that the question is trying to ask you so this is an important video watch this first i will start with the directly programming approach because you know how to start an array or how to take the array element so without wasting any time let me start so this is my basic static void main and now int let's take array of size let me take the same symbols only and this is the array 11 22 33 and let's say 44 okay and now another array let's take int b of size different that is of let's say size 3 only 1 2 and 3 these are the elements i will write it there of size of size 4 and this is of size of size 3 so that the users may not get confused that my is taking different all the same size so i have to now make sure I have to take C and now we know what will be the length of C of equal the length of C will be equal to the length of A plus length of B because we have to show all the elements of A and B. So I have to declare int C is equal to new int and what I have to do declare the size. So the size will be 3 plus 4 that makes 7. So the size will be 7. How? Be I will write it down here because 4 length of array and plus 3 of 3 or well, 4 length of array and 3 of the size b of b array so that makes out 7 okay had it been let's say the user will be inputting the length m and here the user was inputting the length n so what the size would be you should you should have just defined like here new int and you would be writing like simply int c then after a rh statement would be new and in int you would be writing m plus n like this okay the size of a m and the size of n like this you will be if the user would be inputting the values like from buffer reader so this was the main thing after this you have declared okay now what to do now you have to just make sure you follow my programming statements int i is equal to 0 i less than and what is the value of what is the size of this first array a is 4 so we have to make sure that it is less than 4 first we have to transfer all the elements of a to c okay i will write here transfer elements transfer the elements of a to c okay first we are using a array and we are transferring the elements okay so in this you will write c at i is equal to c at i is equal to simple a at i we are just transferring the elements nothing else now again what i will do i will just close the for loop i got my elements transferred from a to c now for transferring the elements of i have to transfer the elements of b also to c so what i will do i will just make sure do the same thing till c what well, is the length of the second array that is three so this is the normal steps now i have to make sure because my already the array would be my c array would be filled till the length of 4 because my previous element or the previous array a length was 4 so i have to start my indexing from 4 because if i don't start my indexing from 4 so what happens the element of b will override the elements of a 
okay so i will just write 4 plus j so that in order the elements get printed of b okay so this is j okay now i what i i will just write here the comment that to transfer okay transfer elements of elements of b i will make a dry run don't worry from b to c this is my program now i will just display c in order you can get that whether the elements are being displayed or not so just in order to check so i will display c only here and the c element is just k plus plus c and that's i will display sop system dot out dot print only in order to get in the same line and let's play print k and let me give a space in order to distinguish the numbers okay this is my space here gets my for loop closed so i hope now you are understanding i will make a dry run don't worry about this so let's see whether the numbers are displayed or not so you can see okay it's all sorry i just displayed it's k at a at k and c because we are displaying this number at c so it will be c at k okay so now let's see whether it will run or not yes you can see see the first the elements were let's see the first elements of are the of a 11 22 33 44 and then the elements of b are displayed 1 2 3 so we all got we got all the values of a and b transferred to c now let me make a dry run for you because it is the essential part until and unless you don't know the dry run you won't be able to solve it so now let me make a dry run it's very easy nothing to bother about it the programming concept was easy just keep have a look on the dry run okay so what we were actually doing is was int a so this was my int a which okay my int a after this int a i have to just make sure i will just write the full code here okay now let's start so my int a was containing what it was containing 11 22 33 and 44 okay and my b was containing what b was containing let me write here it was containing 1 2 and 3 okay this is a dry run that's why i have make blocks and not be specific about the syntax so now my c is from 0 to 7 because i have added the length so i will write a c will go indexing 0 to 7 okay so what happens when we are running this value when we are what we are running we are running the first for loop in the first for loop when i value is 0 i is 0 i is 0 so what we will have we will have c at 0 what the c at 0 c c this is the blocks this these are the blocks okay let's say these are the blocks so when these are the blocks so at c at 0th position the value of a at 0th will be stored what is the value of a at 0 it's 11 so we will store 11 at a at c at 0 this is my c block again when the value of i gets increased the value of i gets 1 so a at i is equals to what is this c at i is equals to a at i so the at one position you will get the value what is at a at i it's 22 22 gets display in the similar way when i gets to when i will get into we will put the value of a at 2 at c at 2 it's 33 okay and in the similar way i gets four i gets three and then four so we will get 33 and 44 this is how i will be at sorry this four won't be running only 33 and then 44 okay as soon as the value of y i gets four the condition gets four because it's less than okay now in this next for loop what happens in this in this j for loop what we are doing let's see in the j for loop see already c is filled till three now we have four five and six only left now if i start see the main condition main thing is we have taken c at 4 plus what is this 4 plus j because j is controlling the for loop okay at b at j see if i had taken not 4 so what happens when the value of j will be 0 so if i have not taken 4 so what it will be c at j so c at j so c at j would be 0 so when the value of 0 j will be 0 the c at 0 is already full it's 11 and if you again write the value at b at j the 1 will be overwritten at this position so the overwritten position will be now c at 0 would be 1 and not 11 this is not required the algorithm will go wrong so in order to fill the c position from the the point where it is empty or the point after which the space last space has occupied after this three we have to start filling the c not from the initial position we have to start from 
from that position from where we have paused previously with a so we have to start from 4 in order to start from 4 we have to put 4 plus j so when the value of 4 when the value of j will be 0 so it will be 0 plus 4 plus 0 so 4 plus 0 gives c at 4 only so we will get c at 4 c at 4 is equals to b at 1 so what is a b at 0 what is the value at b at 0 1 so we will display 1 here or we will put 1 here Again, when the value of j goes 1, so we will display c at 4 plus 1. So, what is c at 4 plus 1? c at 4 plus 1 gives you 5. So, c at 5 is equal to what? b at 1. So, what is the value of b at 1? 2. So, 2 will be displayed. Okay. So, in continuous manner, to get the address shown in the continuous manner without overwriting any value, we have to use this statement that whatever the length of the previous array or the previous first array we are storing, we have to continue. Had it been the length m, so it would be m plus j. Okay for any other number if we don't know the exact length so it would be m plus j so we have to calculate the length of the first array that is m and then start with m plus j and then again the value of j will be 2 and the value of j will be 2 to 2 plus 4 gives you 6 so at position 6 we will get b at 3 so b at 2 b at 2 is 2 only b at 2 is 3 so b at 2 we will store the v b at 2 we will read 3 and we will store it at b at c at 6 so this is 3 this is how the entire programming was working and you got the output okay this is important you should know what you are doing that's why i just gave you a dry run of this okay so let's again move on to the program i think now you should know the why i took this condition okay and why i am using two loops and this is how we should transfer after transferring i just display the c loop that's quite easy the c array or you can say okay so this is again the simple program hope you like this video if you like this video kindly go and subscribe to the code effectively channel